Amazon has enabled Rivian to kind of one-up Tesla when it comes to the most secure reservation queue in the industry. Inside of his contributor Tom Malogny will be here to explain. Elon Musk revealed where the new battery day tech is going to be produced. Mercedes-Benz unveils more electric cars and starts production on some. They are not kidding around anymore. Polestar and Volvo's electric cars EPA range is revealed, but will you be disappointed? All electric Ford F-150 will offer a very interesting way to extend your range. Tesla finally will get one of the most common features in cars today, but how much will you have to pay for it? Audi e-tron GT pictures teased as production starts soon. All electric Hummer will be unveiled in a huge way in about a week and more electric cars news coming up next. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of electric car scoop. If you see that subscribe button and it's still red, that means you need to hit it immediately and then also hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. Amazon has put out a video essentially unveiling the Rivian delivery truck. Now we can see it not just from the outside, but also on the inside and it's full of gadgets and, and tech toys, which is really cool. They did it in a style where they have unveiled it to a few of the Amazon truck drivers and, and show their reaction. All right, so it's not the sexiest vehicle ever. It's kind of like if a Honda E had a baby with an elephant. What now? Ah. But all jokes aside, if you think about the demand versus capacity, I don't think there has ever been a manufacturer who has been in a better position than Rivian with the 100,000 reservations from Amazon. Now, I know what you're saying, but Alex, the Cybertruck has over 700,000 reservations. Yes, that's true. But as we know, as we've learned from the Model 3 reservation queue, which was over half a million of reservations, that doesn't really translate into sales very well. It turned out that reportedly less than a third of those Model 3 reservations turned into the actual orders, mainly due to the 35,000 version delay for over two years and the fact that a lot of people made two reservations per household. And that's when the reservation was $1,000. Now the Cybertruck reservation only $100. I am one of the reservation holders, but we should expect even worse conversion ratio from the reservations to the actual orders. But you know, the same goes to the Rivian's reservation queue of their SUV and the pickup truck. And the last time I checked, there were more than 30,000 of those, but the 100,000 reservations from Amazon is pretty much a sure thing. And not only that, I am pretty sure if Amazon is happy with this fleet, they will be ordering more and they will have to renew their fleet every several years. So Rivian will be very busy and I don't see how other companies won't tap Rivian to do the same for them. And it looks like other companies are catching on to the same uh, delivery van craze, including Mercedes, Workhorse, and even Bollinger. Now the Bollinger is a very interesting one because as they are struggling to bring their SUV and their pickup truck to production, they've actually recently also unveiled the all electric delivery truck. And it looks like they've kind of got forced into it. Here's what the CEO of Bollinger, Robert Bollinger, told me a few weeks ago. Basically, the reason why we even went down that path is because we had outside companies come and ask us about delivery vans. So a little while ago, we had a press release about our chassis, you know, the electronic electric chassis that's underneath our trucks. Yeah. And so that as a separate, you know, platform, you know, we announced how that's our platform underneath our trucks. And so we had a couple of delivery companies come to us and a couple of manufacturers of delivery, you know, stuff come to us and said, hey, can we use that platform for delivery? For more, we turn to the Inside EVs contributor, Tom Malogny. But before that, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by NeoCharge. Already have a 240 volt outlet, but want to charge two electric cars or maybe split it between a car and an appliance without spending tons of money on an electrician? Check out NeoCharge, your plug and play solution. Get one today and use the discount code in the description of this video. And by Climate Exchange, that's right, the Tesla raffle is back. You can win a Tesla of your choice. Only 4,000 tickets will be sold, so make sure to get yours using the link in the description of this video. And even if you don't win, the money will go towards a great environmental cause.
All right, Tom, so we are getting very close to production time for Rivian and not just for their pickup and the SUV, but also for their Amazon delivery trucks. Now, do you think that it's possible that Amazon will be a bigger customer for them than their entire fan base who will be buying the pickup and the SUV? Alex, I, I think we can't underestimate how big a deal this is. For deliver, all electric delivery vehicles, it, it, the market is enormous. The money savings is ridiculous. They're talking something of our lines of 50 to 60% savings. And, you know, fleet managers like Amazon would, would do anything for a 5% savings. And you're talking about, you know, 50 to 60%. I think that Rivian will not be able to make these vans fast enough. Not just Amazon, all of these logistic companies are going to want to transition to electric vehicles when they see how incredibly large the savings are going to be. So is this a missed opportunity maybe for other brands, including Tesla? And th is this one of those times where Rivian kind of one-upped Tesla, at least for the time being, going into this delivery truck market? So Tesla hasn't completely forgotten about the logistics business. They are making the semi, but this is a little different. Um, and yeah, in that regards, I think that Rivian, you know, maybe out Tesla, Tesla a little bit here with doing something that nobody else was doing and really, you know, putting a product out there that really, at least in the beginning, they're not going to have much competition, if any competition. Rivian won't be able to make these fast enough, Alex, and I think it's going to be a, a huge cash cow for the company. Yeah, I totally agree. This this story has been out for a while, but I feel like only now we're realizing how big it is. But um, all right, before before I let you go, uh, I know you told me about this uh, cool event yesterday, and I thought that would be uh, kind of cool to share it with uh, our audience here. Do tell. Yeah, so we have the full story up on Inside EVs for those interested. But basically, Canosa Events hosts these really cool driving events around the world. And uh, they're doing one in California. It's for electric vehicle owners only. Basically, you get to get together with about 20 other electric vehicle owners and Andy Sly, the YouTube uh, channel uh, of YouTube fame, is going to be along for the ride. And it's a, it's a, a, a four-day, three-night event uh, in California. And basically, you get to do some wine tasting, eat some really cool food, spend a few days with other electric vehicle enthusiasts. I think it's going to be a fun time. All right. I put a link to the event article in the description of this video. But you know what else is there? The link to Tom's newly redesigned YouTube channel. Check it out and subscribe. As the excitement from the Tesla's battery day is cooling off, we now know where that new tech is actually going to be manufactured. It looks like Elon has tweeted that the 4680 battery tech, uh, the new front and rear single piece casting, and the paint shop will be first implemented in Germany. If you have followed Sandy Munro's appearances on this channel, and he is our monthly contributor, you probably know that he has heavily criticized the quality of the Freeman factory, especially the paint shop. And here's what he had to say about a few weeks ago when we talked about what we can expect from the Berlin factory. The, um, the build quality should be dramatically better, dramatically. Like, um, so different that, um, that people will rave over it. And if it's made in Germany and it's made by folks who absolutely know how to put a product together, if they hire the right people to, uh, to make this thing put together correctly, and they hire the right people to make sure that each part that's stamped is stamped properly, on and on and on. If they have that, then the the difference will be enough that people might uh, say, I, I don't I don't want a, an American build, I want a German build. Mercedes-Benz has a great all-electric SUV EQC already selling in Europe for over a year. We don't know if it's coming to the United States anytime soon. They are also going in production with all-electric luxury sedan EQS and with the EQA, the compact SUV based on the GLA series going in production later this year, we definitely are realizing that they are no longer joking around. 
they're really doing this and now they have released a video featuring three different prototypes two of which are completely brand new models that they're planning on making in the next couple of years and one of them of course is the latest production prototype of the eqs i absolutely love this car when i was able to test drive their concept car but i can't wait to see what's under that camouflage what is the difference between the, the beautiful concept and what's going in production the other two prototypes are the eqe which they're calling a business limousine of the future not really sure why because it's actually smaller than the eqs and another one is the eqs suv which is due to go in production in 2022 and they even teased a new concept car which is the eq double x with over 750 miles of range though i gotta tell you this is just probably a random guess as far as the range is concerned because this is a research project for now and there's absolutely no timeline for its release so it looks like mercedes is very serious about getting all of these electric cars to the market in the next couple of years so i'm looking forward to it because maybe they can become the legacy manufacturer leaders in electric cars to give tesla a little bit more competition which is good for everybody Polestar 2, the Volvo brand and the Volvo XC40 Recharge both got their EPA rating and, um, well, I mean, they're both above 200, which is good, but they're definitely below most of our expectations. Now, Polestar 2 got a rating of 233 EPA miles, while we expected around 250, mainly because they kind of told us so. Plus, on top of that, all about 2200 of them that were made and sold are now being recalled for this sudden stop problem volvo xc40 recharge got a 208 mile epa range rating on the same 78 kilowatt hour battery as polestar 2 but it is a heavier vehicle as i've been saying for years anything over 200 miles in a range is going to be good for the majority of the electric car owners However, in this case, the problem is not so much the range, but how much you have to pay for it. So in case of the Polestar 2, it's priced just under $60,000, whereas the XC40 Recharge is at $55,500, both before the federal tax incentive. And if you look at the electric cars that are already on the market or coming to the market in the next 12 months, I think the Polestar 2 and the Volvo will have a tough time selling these two models, but only time will tell. Let me know in the comment section of this video if you agree. Ford's all-electric F-150 is not going to be here until 2022, but you know it will be reaching a completely new audience and the range anxiety is going to be a thing. So it looks like Ford has patented a solution for that upcoming problem, which will be a gas range extender, which will go on the back of the truck. It will look essentially like a toolbox and you will be able to recharge your battery using gas. Now, I know it's not a perfect solution that we all wish for. However, I do believe because it is a gas backup solution it will make the adoption of the pickup trucks especially for the legacy brands like ford much easier but if you think about it what it's doing is turning the all-electric pickup truck into a plug-in hybrid pickup truck and i have always thought of plug-in hybrid vehicles and i own one of them as a gateway drug to the electric future and it is a temporary solution now it's not as tacky as carrying the gas generator on the back of your electric vehicle but not as classy as the bmw i3 range extender now let's move on to a new segment that i would like to introduce on this channel and i will call it things that tesla should have had five years ago are here now we will start with the bird's eye view feature which many of us have enjoyed on many many different cars so this one is from nissan but elon musk has finally tweeted out saying it will be coming to all teslas soon however it will be part of the full self-driving package which as you know is not very cheap about eight thousand dollars for that kind of money i feel like i can hire a college kid off of craigslist to fly a drone above my car at all times and just text me pictures from the actual bird's eye view now on the next installment of the things that should have been in tesla five years ago are finally here we're going to talk about the new feature where the roof is actually staying on 
And I'm not actually kidding. There's a Tesla Model Y owner who took his car for the first ride and the roof literally came off. Not kidding. The Audi e-tron GT, a car that was unveiled a couple of years ago and a lot of us fell in love with it. I was lucky enough to be able to drive the original prototype through the street of Los Angeles. It's finally going into production at the end of this year. Now, I am very excited about this car because it is going to be based on the Porsche Taycan because both Porsche and Audi are Volkswagen Group brands, but the price tag, even though it's still high, won't be as high as Taycan's and it will definitely have better interior. The all-electric new Hummer EV will premiere in about 10 days on October 20th and it's going to be huge. And I don't just mean the, the truck itself, I'm talking about the actual premiere. This will be probably the biggest car debut in the United States since the whole shutdown. The electric Hummer will debut during the game one of the World Series. I think that's baseball. And we shouldn't really be surprised because when they've announced it in the beginning of this year, it was via the Super Bowl ad featuring LeBron James. And I gotta tell you, this is probably one of my most favorite story of the electric car revolution so far because you can't think of the biggest enemy of the electric car movement than the gas guzzler Hummer. And now look, it's going to be all electric. Now the next story is something that I have already touched on during my last news update. And this time around, it looks like it's true. Tesla has officially dissolved their PR department and this is per electric and over the years you guys probably have heard my frustration as well as frustration of many other of my fellow electric car journalists with Tesla's PR but the fact that Fred Lambert who is the editor-in-chief of electric has mentioned in that article that even he has many different issues with their PR department over the years and i have never seen tesla be nice to any publication besides electric and maybe motor trend in the last 10 years or so so that was quite surprising now i should mention once again that during the battery day no media was present and all of us who tried contacting tesla for a press pass got absolutely no reply though after the event elon said that he was frustrated with the way media has digested the information from the event. Now, does Tesla really need a PR department uh, besides Elon's Twitter account? Well, probably not. Let me know in the comment section if you agree, but uh, in a few years, once the competition is really going to heat up and it looks like it will, this is something that Tesla should probably reconsider. If you guys haven't seen my video about how Electrify America has been sneaking in electric vehicles into Sacramento, the city where I live, check out the link in the description of this video and uh, click uh, right here if you're watching it on YouTube. So their mayor has some explanation to do. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.